Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Curse of Oak Island Archaeologist Dr. Aaron Taylor has discussed who he thinks built the mysterious stone roadway. Oak Island regular archaeologist Dr. Aaron Taylor has opened up about his time spent working on the enigmatic Nova Scotian island, and he's given us his opinion on who may have built the strange cobblestone pathway. He has also spoken about the strong levels of camaraderie between the cast and crew, and about the high levels of professionalism and scientific expertise displayed by everybody working to solve the centuries-old mystery. Taylor forms part of the so-called army of archaeologists who have descended on Oak Island in the last two seasons, a section of the workforce that, at first, Rick and Marty Legina were a bit disparaging and weary towards, but have since lauded as the discoveries began piling up. Aaron spent most of season 8 working with trusty sidekick Miriam Amaralt on uncovering the stone path or roadway that was first found in the swamp. The theory is that this road was used to transport cargo, hopefully treasure, from a wharf in the swamp to somewhere else, fingers crossed, possibly the money pit itself. And last month, Taylor sat down with Dustin and Deidre White from the Could It Be Oak Island podcast and discussed at length his important work on the island. Responding to a listener's question, the guys asked Aaron who he thinks built the road and asked him to explain his thinking. He said that there are two possibilities, the French or the British. The wooden stakes found on the road were dated to between 1680 and 1720 which was a time when both the French and the British were very active in that part of the world. Aaron Taylor suspects the British built the Oak Island Stone Roadway, and Aaron says that if he was a betting man, he'd opt for the British. Sadly, he wasn't any more specific than that. But he did say why he thought it was the British. His reasoning was the discovery of British-style ceramics and a piece of gunflint that appears to originate from Old Blighty, he said the gunflint was grayish in color, whereas the French version tended to have a yellow hue. Unfortunately, the level-headed and methodical archaeologist refused to give an opinion as to exactly why the stone roadway was built in the first place. It seems as though he wishes to wait for more data to come in before coming to a concrete conclusion. Aaron did say that the construction of the road had been a major undertaking that would have required a massive workforce and a lot of time. He said it was definitely not built by fishermen or farmers. And Aaron also deepened the mystery by pointing out that there are better sites on the island from which to unload a ship. So, why was the wharf and roadway built in the swamp? Those who watched the show might remember that Aaron had expressed surprise that they weren't finding more artifacts on the roadway. He reiterated this surprise on the podcast, stating how you would expect to find numerous items, such as drinking vessels and eating containers, on a normal archaeological site. But here, there was almost nothing, as though the builders and users of the road had wished to hide that they had ever been on the island. Oak Island Stone Roadway is a highlight of Aaron Taylor's career, of his time on the island, Taylor echoed his colleague geoscientist, Dr. Ian Spooner, when he said that Oak Island was a lot of hard work, but ultimately very rewarding. He said the stone roadway is one of the highlights of my career. He also spoke about having a lot of respect for all his co-workers on Oak Island, and he praised the professionalism of everyone from Rick and Marty Legina to the camera crew. Fingers crossed Aaron and Miriam will be back on our screens in the fall to continue their work on the stone roadway. Dr. Aaron Taylor, the archaeologist whose presence on The Curse of Oak Island brings a depth of knowledge and insight to the mystery shrouding the island, has sparked considerable interest with his theories about the island's enigmatic stone roadway. This rough, cobblestone pathway uncovered amidst the thick vegetation and muddy terrain, is unlike anything else found on Oak Island, and its origins remain unknown. But Dr. Taylor, with a twinkle in his eye and a passion for history, has a few compelling ideas. 
For years, the stone roadway has baffled explorers, treasure hunters, and scholars alike. Who would have built such a feature in this isolated, challenging environment? Dr. Taylor, ever the detective of the past, begins by examining the stones themselves. With their irregular shapes and varying sizes, these stones do not appear to be the work of an ordinary road construction team from the 18th or 19th century. Instead, they resemble the work of an earlier, more sophisticated hand, suggesting that the roadway might be older than previously thought. Dr. Taylor first entertains the idea that the roadway might have been constructed by the French in the 17th century. In those days, French privateers frequently roamed the North Atlantic, seeking to outmaneuver the British and Spanish for control over the lucrative fishing and fur trading routes. Could they have constructed this pathway to aid in unloading goods and treasures onto the island? The stones used, rough and local, might indicate a hurried job, something cobbled together under pressure in a hostile environment where secrecy was paramount. But Dr. Taylor dismisses this hypothesis almost as quickly as he considers it. The French, with their strategic positions in Newfoundland and along the Street Lawrence River, had little reason to invest significant resources in building infrastructure on Oak Island. Additionally, the French were adept at using natural harbors, and their ships were well-equipped to land on shores without the need for permanent roadways. No, this doesn't quite fit. Instead, Dr. Taylor turns his gaze further back in time to an even more mysterious group of potential builders, the Knights Templar. Could it be that the same secretive order who supposedly buried treasure across Europe had extended their operations to the shores of the New World? He knows that the mere mention of the Knights Templar stirs the imagination, and while he is cautious not to be swayed by fanciful theories, there are clues that cannot be ignored. The Templars were known for their secretive nature and the use of complex symbols and codes. Their knowledge of engineering and building techniques was advanced for their time, and they were among the best-traveled men of the medieval era. Dr. Taylor considers whether the cobblestone road could have been part of a much larger operation, a hidden port where the Templars could move their treasures, or even their sacred relics, in secret. The stones, arranged in a seemingly random yet surprisingly effective pattern, might have served as a hidden pathway to keep supplies dry and steady as they moved goods from ship to shore. Looking at the arrangement of the stones, Dr. Taylor notices something peculiar. The roadway appears to align almost perfectly with certain ancient navigational routes. He begins to wonder if this alignment is purely coincidental or if it suggests that whoever built the roadway had access to knowledge of celestial navigation and cartography. The Templars were believed to have accumulated vast amounts of knowledge from their travels and encounters with other cultures. They were also thought to be skilled in the esoteric arts, including astronomy. Could it be that the stone roadway was built not only as a functional structure, but also as a marker, a guide, or even a sacred path aligned with the stars? However, Dr. Taylor is not content to stop at speculation about the Templars. He considers other possibilities as well, particularly the indigenous Mi'kmaq people who have inhabited the region for thousands of years. The Mi'kmaq were skilled builders and engineers in their own right, adept at creating pathways and structures using natural materials. Perhaps the stone roadway served a spiritual or practical purpose for them long before European explorers set foot on the island. Could it have been part of a larger network of trade routes or ceremonial pathways?